Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. It's a beautiful day to be in Jesus. Yes, it is. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, this is a ministry of Jesus Christ and Brother Thomas here with you today. And a few words today on the sovereignty of God and his perfect plan being carried out by a sovereign God. Oh, and hallelujah. God is indeed sovereign. Yes, he is. Sovereign. And hence, all that God has said, promised, prophesied, comes from a God who is sovereign and able to do and will be done. His will is perfect. His plan is perfect. And there is nothing that can stop it, for he is indeed sovereign God. There is nothing, no one, who can thwart the plan of God, the sovereignty of God. There is none to compare. The devil and all that, they only have what power he gives them to do what it is he has for them to do. They cannot thwart the plan of God. They can only fulfill it, and that they do. With all their iniquities, they fill it up all the way. Oh, yes. And in God's sovereignty, judgment is coming. And it's being revealed already. Yes, it is. As we live in days that are like the days of birth pains, giving birth, Pains are getting stronger and closer and closer together as the coming of the Lord draws nigh. And Jesus is coming again. That's prophesied and promised. As he came the first time, he will come the second time. There is no if, ands, or buts about that. We need not worry because of the length of time or any of the questions that unbelievers raise about that fact. The fact is, he is coming. And here's another fact about the sovereignty of God. He has given us his word, this book right here, the Bible, and it is his inspired word. And what's in it tells us that Jesus will come again. And we can tell from the timeline and events that are unfolding before us these days that that coming draws nigh. Oh, yes. Indeed. Nigh in hand, indeed. <laughs> all right. Now, well, all right. So what are we about as we wait on that coming to take place? Well, another fact about this history book, the Bible, is that it is not just an old book about things that happened way back then. But it is about then, now, today, and the days that yet lie ahead. It's all in here. We're in here. We are the they in this book, the church, the body of Christ. And we're living these things out. These things are as real today, as fresh and right for today as they have ever been. They have not diminished or lost their truth or become old fashioned or out of date. They are as relevant today as they have ever been. It is the word. It is God's word. And it is relevant today. All right. Now, having said that, we know that we're in these pages. We also know from looking at these things, we're getting very close to Revelation chapter 4. The end of the churches are, are, is about there. And that door in heaven is about to be open that John will see in chapter 4 verse 1. We're there, We're really close to there. All right, now, that being the case, what are we about? Well, we are about proclaiming the sovereignty of God in the salvation message of Jesus Christ to a lost and sinful world. We are about walking by faith, not by sight, in these things, giving witness and testimony to the very sovereignty of God, knowing with full confidence that he whose mighty hand we have been humbled under, that 
we might speak boldly the truth of God to the lies of the world. That those who will hear, will hear and believe on Jesus. Confess their sins. That God who is just and willing to forgive, will forgive their sin. And cleanse them from all unrighteousness. As he has for each and every one of us who believe in Jesus now. Absolutely. And God's plan is a sovereign plan with a timing to it. Nothing happens too soon or too late or oops. No oopses. Perfect plan. In John chapter 11, we read of the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Excellent example of God's timing. And his way being far above our ways and his thoughts being far above our thoughts. Now, Jesus gets a message that Lazarus is sick. And they're asking for him to come. Now, Jesus knew Martha and Mary and Lazarus, their brother, had been to their house. He loved them and cared about them. They were his friends. Yes, Jesus had friends. I know we often think of Jesus as, you know, with the 12 and, and otherwise he was a reclusive kind of. Jesus had friends. There were people he knew and talked to and conversated with, hung out with. <laughs> and Martha and Mary's house was one, Lazarus, their brother. And Jesus loved Lazarus. He had a special place in the Lord's heart. So they send for him. Now, it's important that we know that he has this personal relationship with them because it really adds to the depth of all of this to know that. They're not, not talking about coming healing some stranger he's never met before or doesn't know or have any relationship to. This is someone he knows and loves and cares about. But yet he tarries two more days in the same place. He waits two days before he tells the disciples it's time to go. Lazarus is asleep. And they get all confused by that. And Jesus has to explain, no, Lazarus died. Okay, But it's like sleep because I'm going to go wake him up. So it'd be just like sleeping for the night and waking in the morning. I'm going to go wake him up. But he is physically dead, and they've put him in a tomb already. By the time he gets close, Martha and Mary hear he's coming, and Martha runs to meet him. And she says to him, Lord, if you had only been here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. Maybe that's true. But her faith in him is strong. Truly it is, for what she knows and understands, at the level of which she knows and understands it. Consider. <clears throat> then Martha, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. All right. Pure faith, simple trust and faith in God that even though Lazarus was dead now, whatever Jesus would ask the Father, the Father would do. God will do it. So she believes that even now Lazarus can live. It's a simple, beautiful faith. Indeed. Now, what she's not thinking about is what we also know and have already mentioned, the fact that Jesus really didn't need to come there. He could have healed Lazarus' sickness from where he was. But not doing it that way is now going to put this event in a light that is ten times more profound and revealing of God's sovereignty and the person of Jesus Christ than had he just spoken it back then. This is going to be an eye opener. <laughs> As Lazarus' eyes will open, so will many others to the power of God. And Jesus answered and or saith to her, Thy brother shall rise again. And he says this in, in kind of a way that leaves it in an open ended kind of statement here. Let's see where Martha goes with what he says. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection of the last day. Good answer. 
for what she knows. She's obviously been listening when those conversations are taking place at the house. Understands the resurrection at the last day. Pretty good. All right. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Wow. One of the seven I am statements, Jesus is the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. There is no resurrection without him. He is the resurrection of my life. He makes resurrection possible. Yeah, he does. What Jesus does here in these events and brings about makes all resurrection possible. Yes, indeed. He is the resurrection. And the life. Believest thou this? And here's Mary's or Martha's very simple but perfect response for what she knows and understands. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Ah, that's the very same thing that Peter would say. When Jesus would ask them, who do men say that I am? And they say, well, some think you're Elijah, some think you're, you know. He says, who do you say that I am? Peter would, Peter would answer, thou art the Christ, the son of God. And Jesus agrees. And it's on that truth that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, the son of the living God. That is the truth upon which the church is built. The body of Christ is built. And that she believes. She's heard that too. And believes what needs to be believed. Rightly. Now she's about to be taken to the next step. Indeed. So now they're getting in. She runs back and tells Mary. And Mary comes. And basically the same conversation takes place. And Jesus will go to where Lazarus is. And there's all the mourning and the weeping and the, and the women who come with Mary are weeping and Mary's weeping and he groans in his spirit and he's troubled and, and, uh, and sighs within himself. Mm -hmm. So show me where he's at. Show me where you've laid him. And they go. And he stands out front. Says a prayer. Now, he's not praying because he needs to pray and ask God to do this thing. He already knows. It's all set. It's good. They're doing what God has planned for them to do. But for the people to hear that they might know. Yes. He prays and asks the Father. And then what does he do? <laughs> And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Three words, Lazarus, come forth. And he does. He does indeed. And Lazarus comes out of the tomb, still wrapped in grave clothes, cloth on his face, all wrapped up. And Jesus is loosened. Let him go. Loose him from the bonds of grave, of the grave. Loose him and let him go. Now this takes place in perfect timing, under the perfect circumstances, to show that Jesus is in fact the resurrection and the life. The I am, the resurrection. And it is profoundly done for many to see and understand and know. This is God's timing of it. Now, the fact, like you say, is, is he tarried for two days before leaving. Lazarus is dead four days now. Not three. That was for Jesus. That was for the Christ, the Messiah, three days. But four. Four days. One point is, but by now he stinks. You know, he, but he stinketh. <laughs> yeah, the decay would have set in at four days for sure. 
not a problem. Remember Ezekiel's graveyard, the valley of dry bones. There is no problem here. And Lazarus comes forth. All by a proper timing and planning of God. Jesus didn't arrive too early. He didn't arrive too late. He arrived right on time. And as the plan would have it, it is a glorious witness to the sovereignty and power of God, to the person of Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. He is indeed. Beautiful truth. And to know that God is sovereign over all things, life, death, all of creation, God is sovereign. The winds and the waves obey him. He can enter in and step out of his creation at will. There's no place in time that he has not already been and does not already know. He knows the depth of your heart's love for him. He knows the sin of every sinner. He knows. And the plan that we are watching unroll like a scroll before us in the word of God is unrolling before us and we see it. And we know that these words are true and that there is life, life in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. The sovereign will of God. The perfect plan of God perfect plan of salvation, oh, that we might know and live in a love for God, chosen, chosen to love God as God has loved us and offered his love. We receive and give that love as he has given it to us to receive and to give the sovereign plan of God at work in each of our lives, walking us day by day in a plan that will bring us to completion. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good, good works that we should walk in them, that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The finished work of Jesus Christ, his shed blood upon the cross at Calvary, his death, burial, signifying his physical death as Lazarus had been put in the tomb. And on the third day, he rose. Jesus is alive, our God, a living God. Our Savior is a living Savior. Our Lord, a living Lord. And there is none like unto them. None, not even any, not one can even compare. So today, as we watch these things unfolding around us, the birth pains of a second coming. We can know with blessed assurance that God's plan, God's hand, God's will, God's all is sovereign. It is divine. It is perfect as he is perfect. Oh, praise the Lord as we walk in Jesus' name, filled with his spirit, proclaiming his truth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.